Good afternoon, everybody. Again, I guess it's still April 26. I know, right? You guys are totally stuck in a time warp right now. I do apologize, but uh, my videos will be getting more delayed all the time. It's the only way that I can properly and efficiently do YouTube videos uh, for myself. So anyways, we're still waiting on Jared. Yes, it's windy. It's always windy in Saskatchewan. It's always windy in Southwest Saskatchewan for sure. Want to introduce the lineup to you. We're getting ready to go see in here for the 2022 crop year. We got the Fent 1167, 670 horsepower, weighing in at 62,000 pounds. It's pulling an Borgo 84 foot 12 inch basin with mid row banders, three quarter inch openers. And we are tugging a 1340 bushel seed cart. Hopefully you guys can hear me all right with the wind. It's not, it's not awesome. It's not optimum. I understand that, but we probably could have started seeding yesterday. We've been holding off because it's just a little too cold. Um, but we're definitely going to get going. We're waiting for Jared to get up here. So right now, this 1167, this is the heaviest tractor on the farm now. My John Deere four track was the heaviest, which I uh, got rid of. It came in at 65,000 pounds. This one here is my brother's unit. Terry, I do believe it's four track, 60,000 pounds, 84 foot drill, three quarter inch openers, 12 inch base, mid row banders, 1340 cart, the exact same. Over here, we got my other brother, Brian, four track. These are also weighing in at 60,000 pounds. He's pulling a Borgo 84 foot, 12 inch base, three quarter inch opener, mid row banders, and he is also pulling a 1340 uh, cart right there. If you're wondering what these units weigh, empty, empty, just this one cart weighs around 48,000 pounds. So almost call it 50,000 pounds by the time you throw the options and the extra hitch. In. So this cart weighs about 50,000 pounds empty. This 84 foot XTC drill is coming in at around 61, 62,000 pounds. And then obviously we have a 60,000 pound tractor uh, pulling it. So when this unit is completely loaded, it's coming in at around 190,000 pounds. Not counting the weight of the tractor. So that engine has to do a lot. It has to propel that tractor plus pull 190,000 pounds and that's just rolling it. You haven't even put it in the ground. Over here, I'll introduce to you dad's tractor. It's a 9570R, also still running the Cummins engine in there. This tractor, I did not put on a scale. Our scale's kind of malfunctioning at the junction right now. But I do believe it's weighted around that 60,000 pound mark as well. It's full front weights. It's got weights in the rims. Does not have any weights hanging off here. No weights in there. And, but it does have inside weights. It's gotta be around that 60,000 pounds, you guys. Give or take a little bit. We're all give or take a little bit here. And we're waiting for Jared to get up here. He's just trying to finish calibrating right now. Oh, right, the drill. So this was always the drill that Ashton pulled. I'm actually quite sad, to be honest, that she won't be seating with me. It does bother me a little bit. I am super stoked and happy that we have a little one, uh, a little five month, six month old now. His name is Chapel. So she's stepping back from seeding to, you know, he's kind of a full-time job right now. But it does bother me a little bit. I'm, I know, I'm trying to get over it. But, uh, hi Rickles. Hi. Rickles is going to take over this because we did have the 1050 with triples pulling this. This is the 68-foot QDA. All these are XTCs. QDA. Um, also 12-inch space, 3-quarter inch opener, mid-row banders, the exact same spec but it's pulling a 950 cart with the saddle tank. All the drills are equipped with sectional control. That way you want to come on on an angle, go around the slew, it shuts off the towers, okay? Save on your seed and fertilizer. So as I said before, I would show you guys this. You hit a valve, this one right here. You got all these cylinders, one here, two there, on every caster wheel. Another one there, lifts the drill up. Either apply some shims or take some shims out, depending on what you want to do for your depth. I always struggle with this because every time, every spring I look at this and I'm like, 
So to go deeper, do I need to remove some shims or do I need to add some shims? Like I do this every stinking year. The XTC, you do not have that. You do, it's just a straight bar all the way across. Uh, there's no cylinders in here. You have to adjust each opener individually for your depth. You can still adjust your opener over here, but once you set this one time, you put that pin in, you're ready to rock and roll and you do not set it again. You can basically put this pin in here. You can go anywhere from canola to chickpeas, all by just changing your shims. Over here, on the other hand, you have to change each one as each number is a quarter inch. So we are in, wait, I'm in seven? It should not be in seven. This, oh, this isn't my drill. This, they should all be in six, actually. This is Brian's drill. He has to set his depth yet. I'm like, why is it in seven? So six times quarter of an inch, that's how deep we're going. For the trucks, we run these two internationals, HXs with Super Bs. We got the Lone Star. Oh, he's coming now, I can hear him. Also with Super Bs, we run Super Bs on everything. Then my truck is on the water trailers to haul water to our water stations. This is a 4940 sprayer. This is not our sprayer. This is a loaner sprayer for dad as he bought a sprayer and he is still waiting for it to show up. And here comes Jared. So Jared, he is rocking the uh, 9560 RT. It has the John Deere engine in there. He has a pretty heavy two track as well. It's actually coming in. I think I've said it was around 57,000 before, but actually I, think, I do believe that is mistaken. When I look back to what I wrote down at when we scaled it, it's actually around 59,000 pounds. He's also rocking an 84 foot, 12 inch space, three quarter inch opener, mid row banders, XTC. Exact same drills we're rocking. Only difference is, is he has a 950 cart, just like the 6080, the 68 foot. 68 foot has the only cart with an auger on it. Jared also has a conveyor, but it's definitely not the same conveyor as what's on the big carts, the 13. The 13 carts have a gigantic conveyor, and uh, it's a smaller conveyor on the 950s. Also sectional control, everyone has sectional control. Everyone has saddle tanks. Uh, everyone has bulk booms. Everyone is loaded and calibrated. And everybody has hitches. Never mind, I'm proved a liar. Jared does not. Oh man. All right, so now we're all gonna wander over and grab a picture or two. We're gonna have a little uh, word of prayer for our season get, to get set up. We always like to start the season off with, a, with everybody with a word of prayer. And then we are all gonna roll out. Gosh, it's windy. And we're out of here, guys. Wow, is it ever windy out there. I apologize about that. That is just ridiculous. But uh, anyways, uh, Terry's just left. Jared has to do something with his drill. I'm not sure, but Brian's going to help him out. Um, the teams are going to be myself, Rickles, uh, and Brian. So basically the same teams as we had last year. And it's going to be Jared and Terry on team one or team two. We don't know who's team one and we don't know who's team two. Everyone always says that team one who's two drills or can always compete with the three drills. But... It's, it's funny because uh, we always get sent to some of like the farthest stuff. We get sent to the farthest stuff. My older brother, you know, he doesn't like to move as much, so he likes to stay closer. So he can wrap a lot more acres because you're way more efficient if you don't have to, you know, if you're not sitting on the road for seven hours going to your next field. And so I was like, well, I don't know about you guys, but I've already wrapped 5,000 acres on my drill. And we're like, holy cow, I'm only at like 3,000. They're like, ha! You guys are underperformers, but it's tough, right? Because, you know, we're spending all the time on the road moving. But uh, anyways, that's the teams. Pretty much the same as it always was. I also want to mention uh, our merchandise. Um, if you're interested in merchandise, I apologize. Like, the t-shirts should have been there a long time ago. Uh, now we have them. We do have them. And so now it's our bad of just getting them on the website for you guys. So I do apologize about that. Uh, if you're interested in them, I, we got all new merchandise from last year. All new. I think we just about discontinued everything. So we got all new hoodies, all new t-shirts, different sayings, so on and so forth. So check it out. I think it's like www.faithofarms.com or something like that. And uh, also we have a little description that kind of explains you know, who we are, what we do, and so on and so forth. So check that out. And let's let this seeding 2022 begin.
Let's get cracking. All right, well, I think that uh, we're gonna see you guys at the field. I definitely like that there's no power shift. I just hope that I like that when it's in the field. <laughs> Do you believe that Jared is behind us? Court Jared. Rickles is behind us. We're not going too far. Brian isn't with us yet, he's still helping uh, Jared. Hmm. Woo! You gotta be careful with this two track, I'm a two track noob! Okay, we had to turn our fans on here, and now we got to run outside and uh, face that wind. We got to do run checks. Okay, we got our tanks on. We're just gonna hit this. They're lighting up green. Can you hear it? Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. All right. Now we want all the seed. And the little bit of fertilizer we're putting down, all to come out of our mid-row band or mid-row band. Oh my goodness! Out of our openers. We are going to keep our mid-row banders up because we are not putting on enough fertilizer to utilize them right now. And nothing is coming out of them. That is a good sign. So I will shut that fan number two off that shoots air to these puppies because I don't need that air going. We're going to lock them up. There. So when I uh, go up and down now with the drill in and out of the ground when I'm seeding, my mid-row banders will stay up because I hydraulically lock them. Now we need to go and make sure we got seed and furt coming out of every opener. Oh, wow, that's windy. And I'm gonna do that so that way you guys don't have to take this wind. But basically we just wanna see, wanna see that. Seed, 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 seed. Seed, seed, yep, yep, yep. Check, 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 and so on and so forth. And we're good. All right, let's go give Rick a hand. He's kind of new to seeding. So we're just gonna help him out a little bit. All right, so we're just working on uh, Rickle's drill here. We're taking one shim out. This QDA is awesome to change your depth, but it is, makes my brain hurt all the time. Especially the first time out of the year. So. You read over here, quick depth adjust. Extend the cylinder, yes, we move the, uh, oops, sorry, here about that. Slide and rotate the uh, shims. Each shim will lift the opener one eighth of an inch with respect to the packer. Remove the shims to increase the working depth. So we have four shims in there. And then over here, you don't change this, but we are in hole number seven. Each hole represents one six. Yeah, okay, you got that. So that's one six, I guess times seven. And then we uh, use these shims, one eight. Goes with the hole, goes with the one six. You got that clear as mud. 
We're just going to pull the shim out and just give it a little checky, checky, check. <laughs> also, you know, uh, tire pressure plays, uh, plays a role with the QDA. Obviously, these tips, we're going to try to get one more year out of them. They are a little bit more wore out. Uh, so when you're running new tips, you would be to your maximum depth. We're not. We're running used tips. We're going to pull one shim out. So let's just pull a shim out here. Not too, Mike. Not too, buddy. Come on. It, look, and I'm working with air. Okay. There we go. Put our, put our pin back in here. Of course, nothing likes to line up properly. That's how I like to roll. It's that one shim. There it is. Okay, I gotta put my phone. Alright, so we got that back in. So, then you gotta do these ones. And you gotta do these ones. And you gotta do them all. So I'm gonna get working on that here. Rick, what do you think? That's a lot easier than doing the XCCs. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think we should change it all. Wow, well, I don't know about that. It makes my brain hurt all the time when I'm looking at my depth. <laughs> all right, this is our valve. You want to hit our valve there, Rickles. There. You do not know how many times I've went seating with that valve up. And I'm like, man, what the heck is going on with that drill back there? And I realized my drill's still up because I forgot to put it down. Okay. We did a run check on Rickles. He's gonna put it in the ground and we're gonna dig for a little bit of seed. You cannot start seeding without digging for seed. That cannot be done. hear it. That's good. There, I'll turn around here so we can look into the sun. I need to get my screwdriver. There it is. Oh, I'll fill it back in. Hold on here. Hold on, guys. Right there. Okay, right there. See it? See it? That kernel? Kind of red looking? Right? There. Alright, let's get back on this rig here. Whew, sorry about that wind. It's just ridiculous out here. Okay, I gotta do some tweaking to this thing to get it uh, fully operational. Uh, Tim, my sales guy's here. He's gonna work, go through this hitch and stuff with me. I will catch you guys after that. You know, I've always said you never start by the road. You never, never start your first pass by the road. Well, Tim and I, we're starting our first pass by the road. I don't see how this could go wrong. <laughs> well, this is our first pass, you guys. We're hoping that uh, we're actually seeding. Everything seems to be green. Kind of hear the tractor a little bit. It's pulling pretty easy. At least it feels like it's pulling pretty dang easy. Though it should. Our mid row banders are out of the ground. It's pretty dry. What do you think, Tim? You thought you'd come down here and you'd be on YouTube video. You're like, oh no. You're I just like, you're I like, didn't. shoot. I was trying to avoid that. I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> <laughs> Just try and come down and show him how to run his tractor and then he pulls out his camera like, oh no. Yeah, here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh no, Tim's an awesome guy. All right, so uh, Tim just left. Uh, we've been going for probably about an hour or so now. Show me how to work on my hitch, how to activate it by this, and turn it on, and set the sensitivities, and let's go to the hitch for a second. 
So we're sitting right now at 20% sensitivity. So if it's at 100%, it's very rigid. And if it was at zero, it would you could just about push it by hand type deal. Um, then this parameter here is 66% that you see. That means that the draw bar can only go 66% all the way across, not 100. And so basically that 70% mark is pretty much all I can go. And we just about felt, found that out the hard way because when my hitch swings over, it yanks on those hydraulic hoses and that wiring harness back there, very tight, very tight. And I'm like, well, no big deal. I'll just grab a 9 16 wrench right there, loosen off those clamps and pull it some more. Well, once I grabbed the 9 16 wrench and started pulling on it, I realized that my hoses are already as long as they can be. So we can't run even 80%, never mind 100% uh, usage of our, of our hydraulic swinging hitch because I will rip my hydraulic hoses right off my air drill. So that is kind of unfortunate. I didn't even think to check that. And of course now we're seeing and being that it's so dry, I probably won't do anything about it. I'll probably just keep it right there at the 66% and, uh, and run it. I don't know. But anyways, that's kind of the dealio. So uh, we're seeding Durham. We're only seeded at uh, 70 pounds, so that's just a little over a bushel. Bushel 60 pounds. That's pretty normal for us. We're normally we're normally running that 70 to 80. 70 to 90 sometimes, but being it's so dry, uh, we backed our seeding weight down, and we've, we're pretty basically zero fertilizer now. Like, we have a full crop of fertilizer sitting. We have enough fertilizer right now in the soil, without adding any, for like a 45, or in some places, a 50 bushel uh, crop. Well, the only way we'd ever get a 45 and a 50 bushel crop is it would have to have a monsoon season come through because you know that's a really good yield for us so we already have a full year's worth of fertilizer in the ground because typically we're fertilizing for that 40 50 bushel crop and it's all there so we don't need to put any more and really that's awesome because with the price of fertilizer it's tripled in price or near tripled in price and uh so we're just putting a little bit of starter down we're just throwing a little bit of foss down a little bit of nitrogen all down the seed road just to give it a good kick start you know get kick it in the butt you know like i give it some caffeine in the morning as you drink your cup of coffee and then the rest it's all there and available for it if it even rains and i guess if it doesn't rain again this year there is a chance of that we are prone to be very dry and we are very dry typically droughts come in spurts you guys we're obviously praying for rain but uh if it doesn't rain well then awesome we didn't actually lose near as much money as we could have if it does decide to start raining, no big deal. We have enough crop, we have enough fertilizer in that soil for a good crop. Obviously, if it decided to turn to like the rainforest around here, it just never quit raining. Well, then I had to push our nitrogen down and then I guess if we were at that situation or that kind of problem, then I guess we'd be looking at putting some liquid or granular and blowing it on on top, depending on the crop stage. So right now, Let's get back to the tractor for a second. We are sitting at 1470 RPM. It is sitting on TMS. We are in TMS mode. Oops, sorry about that. Um, so the minimum it will drop is 1350. The reason why we set it at 1350 is because if we're turning a corner and it takes like no power to turn a corner, we don't want to go all the way down to a thousand. And then as soon as we stick it in, it goes, it's trying to catch back up. We're, we want to take that leg out. So we put the minimum 1350 and it's running around that 14 and 1470. So obviously it's pulling really easy right now, but we all expected that. All the tractors are just going down the field at like half, like 50, 60% horsepower. It's super easy to pull. We're on flat fields. To us, these are very flat fields. Our mid row banders are up because we're not putting any extra fertilizer down and they take quite a bit of horsepower to pull as well. It's decently quiet. It's not 1050 quiet. But I might jump around to some of the other tractors and I'm also gonna open up my uh, app for uh, uh, count the decibels. This one I feel has a little bit more of a whine in it. 
Don't know if it's hydraulic or turbo. Haven't figured that out yet, but it doesn't matter. But as of right now, I'm happy with it. We haven't even begun to test this thing yet. So this is basically day one of seeding. We've had lots of issues. Jared, I don't know if he's still going. Rickles uh, just broke down. He had some electronic issues. Um, I just stopped, and the wind is getting even crazier out there, you guys. It's it's just, it's it must be blowing a storm into southeast Saskatchewan again. I feel bad for you guys, especially the guys down in Manitoba. Oh my goodness, you guys are flooding down there. Um, we're the exact opposite, but uh, definitely feel for you guys. But we're definitely running through some. The first days, first two three days, is always quite rough. So once we can get to iron these days out, uh, we're going to be off to the races here, Lord willing. So. You guys have yourself a good one. We're going to do lots of videos. And maybe we'll get you out of this little uh, um, time warp that you guys seem to be stuck in on April 26th. So anyways, you guys have yourself a good one. And uh, adios. Have fun out there.